Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for supporting us. We are very happy to be finalists uh, in the Commons Prize. Um, we are very proud um, for, for what we've accomplished uh, at this moment in Gravity, um, where we are carrying the flag of conflict management uh, and trust creation as basic infrastructure for DAOs. Yeah, thanks, Juan. I, I feel like we're you know, we've been working for about a year and a half now uh, within Gravity, and it's become a larger and larger part of the token engineering commons culture and coming out of the, the cultural build itself. So I feel like the principles of common stack, the token engineering commons and Gravity are all highly aligned, um, uh, maybe more than almost anything else. And speaking for myself, the, the fact that we have a cultural build at all is a huge um, is a, is a huge inspiration to me and the reason why I wanted to participate uh, in the first place. So the, the whole thing about the commons is, uh, I think, fundamental to everything that we're doing here uh, in the Gravity DAO. Okay. We have 15 active participants in a daily basis, and we have around 50 Gravitons, who are people who have um, claimed six or more of the POAPs in our training. We have also 40 people who have participated in the trainings, but haven't claimed the six POAPs, so, so they are not Gravitons. And we have also five DAOs who are um, also implementing uh, conflict resolution and untrust creation um, within their cultural practices. And we are working actively with them, like uh, Gitcoin, Aragon, the TEC, Giveth, and the Common Stack. And uh, for us, what, what stands out from the TC and from the common stack framework is that um, they care for the cultural build inside organizations. And uh, they understand that the social layer is a critical piece in the infrastructure of any project. And that sometimes that is easily overseen. <clears throat> we also uh, really like the, the design of the augmented bonding curve. And we would like to have an augmented bonding curve um, for our token um, that we would also and could also manage within our gardens. Um, we also like uh, the, the evolution of the praise and reward system because we think that uh, it's a very comprehensive way, not only to, to have transparency and accountability on the work being done, but also to reward the contributors. And um, we also think that, that um, this framework enables and fosters the participatory uh, decision-making. Would you like to do uh, on Ostrom's principles? Sure. Um, yeah, in terms of o Ostrom's principles, I, I feel like you know gravity is kind of born out of um, Ostrom's principles and, and care for the commons uh, is inevitably uh, linked to um, the, the double dynamic of conflict resolution and trust creation, right? Uh, preventative, it's the, it's the lowest cost thing imaginable. So uh, even though it might take a bunch of time, which it always does, ritualizing conflict using things like liberating structures and other things um, go quite a quite a bit further beyond resolving conflict, but also creating a situation in which uh, conflict is a regular part of your life and you develop a vernacular about it within the cultural community and become much more familiar with those principles and the expectations that are set. I will also um, include the, the fact of that Ostrom's principles um, are eight and three of them talk about um, conflict resolution. Oh yeah, and um, that around monitoring, they say that it's yeah. really costly to, um, for for communities to have an external monitoring, and that allows a lot of corruption. Yeah. So the best monitoring is the one that is done by the people in, inside the community, and that um, having access to low to low cost conflict resolution mechanism gives legitimacy to the social agreements. And I would also say that. Um, gravity itself is a really good example of principle number eight, which is appropriate relations with other groups. 
right? So by creating and, and, and maintaining a framework for relationships with other groups, uh, you can only really do that effectively if you're doing it internally within your own DAO. You, this is a basic psychological fact that you can only extend to others what you extend to yourself. So if your own DAO works well within itself and governs itself well, according to Ostrom's principles, then it's going to be <laughs> very appropriate for you then to uh, have appropriate relations to, to other groups. Yeah, we, we have also talked a lot about diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And how is it important to have good relationship inside a DAO, but mm -hmm. also to have people um, who is capable of uh, and who is skilled in negotiation um, to have a relationship with other DAOs mm -hmm. and that those relationships are of, of trust and of coordination. We think that um, right now the scope of gravity can, can grow a lot and there's a lot of potential in gravity because uh, we don't only want people to mediate conflicts inside a DAO, but also thinking in the future scenario of complex relationships between DAOs. Let's jump to, to question yeah. four. We are already using um, the Gnosis ecosystem. Right now we have um, XDAI in our treasury and uh, for our multisig, and we use the work for the distribution of bounties. So um, yeah, we also trust um, the Gnosis ecosystem and think that it's a very robust um, chain that um, will allow us to grow as a commons. And for question number five, so um, we don't think that, um, we would need to onboard a lot of people into Web3 uh, because the main audience of our service are Web3 um, native people and DAOs. Um, and the facilitators and the mediators uh, would only um, have a very basic interaction with, with, with blockchain. We can say that um... Uh, we're not necessarily onboarding people directly, but we're we're attempting to enable other groups. One of the end results of the cultural build was our realization that we needed more of that exact thing, right? Psychologists, social scientists, conflict resolution, um, you know, the soft sciences, right? The human sciences. Um, and in fact, it's actually part of the crypto economics flower too, right? some of the petals of the like half of the petals of the crypto economics flower are human psychology you know decision making that type of thing as opposed to all of these hard sciences so yeah i do think just by token engineering's own crypto economics flower we are um we're helping to um, include a larger population of people in web3 than would typically come because they were interested in programming on solidity or things like that right so I, I actually do think just having the availability of this space and the space that was opened by the token engineering commons cultural build uh, is a tremendous uh, benefit to the web3 space um, just by itself 